Hey YouTubers, Muskrat Jim here, and today I want to talk about dehydration. A healthy adult can live up to three weeks without food, but only about three days without water. Your body uses two quarts, that's a half a gallon or two liters of water every day, more if you're exerting yourself and if the weather is hot and dry. Symptoms of mild dehydration include dry mouth and a feeling of thirstiness, darker than usual urine, less frequent urination, and fatigue, dizziness, and irritability. Now ignoring these signs can lead to no urine output, extreme sleepiness, fainting caused by reduced blood pressure, delirium, and finally death. So it's very important to stay hydrated and drink a minimum. Little squirrels watching me here. So it's very important to stay hydrated and drink a minimum of two quarts a day. Recognize the signs of dehydration and take appropriate measures right away. Out here we don't have the luxury of sanitized city water or deep country wells. So where are we going to find water? We have to look for water wherever we can find it. And then we have to make it suitable for human consumption. If you know your area through maps, aerial photographs, or through familiarity, you can make your way to those lakes, rivers, streams, and marshes. But what if you don't know the area you're in? What if you're lost? Well, water flows downhill, so you can start by walking downhill. The larger animals need to drink in the mornings and in the evenings, so if you see their paths, follow them downhill. They'll be leading to water. Sometimes the surface water will have dried up, so if you see a dry stream bed or plants that typically grow in marshes, you can dig there. Water will seep into the hole that you've dug. It'll be dirty, maybe even black, so you'll have to filter it as best as you can. Rain can be collected using an open tarp or a survival blanket. This can be laid in a depression on the ground or elevated at an angle so that the rain will flow into an open container. Rain or dew can also be collected from wet foliage by using a rag and wringing it out into a container or sucking the moisture directly from the cloth. If you're on the seashore, you can't drink the seawater without distilling it first because you can't filter out dissolved salts and other chemicals. Lacking distilling equipment, you can dig just above the high tide mark. Dig until the water starts seeping into the hole. Collect, filter, and sanitize just as you would any other surface water. It's important to note here that drinking seawater may speed up your dehydration because of its salt content. Also, drinking unsterilized surface water can lead to vomiting and diarrhea, both of which can greatly speed up your dehydration. In the winter, if you have snow, all you have to do is melt it. Fresh clean snow, like fresh clean rain, doesn't need filtering or sanitation. In the spring, when the sap is running, you can even tap a birch or a maple tree and collect the watery sap. Plants in other parts of the world have abundant sap that can be used as drinking water. For example, the wild grapevine in the United States, the Australian water root, um, bamboo in the tropics, as well as coconut milk, which can also be used as drinking water. So as I mentioned earlier, surface water has to be filtered, sterilized, or distilled before you can drink it. Filtered to remove the dirt and the cloudiness. Sterilized to remove all those little critters that are going to make you sick. Or distilled to separate the salts and the chemicals that you can't filter out. As you can see it's really overcast here. However, 
In much of the world where the sun is bright and strong, you can use the SODIS method to sterilize water. It uses the sun's ultraviolet rays to kill all the microbes. All you need is a clear container like a soda pop bottle or a Ziploc bag and bright sunlight for a minimum of 6 to 12 hours. In areas where winters are long, like here in Canada, solar radiation isn't as strong as it is near the equator, so I wouldn't trust the SODIS method to sterilize my drinking water. So without commercial filters, or chemicals, or still, you're left to boiling water to make it safe for human consumption. Which brings me to a pet peeve of mine. In survival literature, there's a lot of misleading information out there. So I feel I have to say a few things. In a well-respected survival manual, it says that you can suck the water out of fish eyes. Fish eyes? Seriously? How many fish eyes are you going to have to suck to get your two-quart minimum? Many other books talk about making solar stills by digging a three-foot hole and covering it with a four-foot sheet of plastic. A still of this size, in ideal conditions of bright sunlight, wet soil, and an airtight seal, can produce a pint, or 500 milliliters, of water in a day. You'd need several of these stills to keep you from dehydration. Perhaps to augment other methods, but not on its own. A famous survivalist, who doesn't need to be named, claims that you can drink your own urine. Bad idea. Urine is full of salt and other chemicals and should be treated just as seawater. Other so-called experts say you should boil your water for at least 5 to 10 minutes. If you're like me and you've ever boiled water in a small pot, you know that boiling for 5 to 10 minutes will boil your pot dry. Just bringing it to a boil will cook any microbes in the water. Look at pasteurization. Milk is heated to below the boiling point and that's enough to sanitize it for human consumption. Well, that was my rant. For more information on this subject, be sure to watch my other videos. My compact still for treating seawater and beaver fever, pocket water filters and AquaTabs demo. So remember, stay hydrated and survive. This is Muskrat Jim, signing out.